We're back! Hey. Wait, I mean, I'm Robert Evans, and this is Behind the Bastards <laughs> Podcast. Bad people. Talk about them. Um, Brandy Posey. That's me. We are here. It's part two. Part two. Of Hitler fucks. Hitler fucks. Boogaloo. Yes. Hitler's exactly. dick. Everybody's thinking about it. Everybody's thinking about it. Everybody- part two of Hitler's stupid dick. Hitler's stupid. And I'm going to guess, you know, he, he doesn't seem like a guy who uh, did a lot of core strengthening exercises. So no. I'm going to guess a little little low energy. No. Uh, yeah. Hitler is like uh like a like a like a, a five pump kind of guy. I and know then he gets what mad his, at you. I know what his hair would do. Because <laughs> I can imagine like a sweat drenched fucking Hitler with just like that yeah. little thing flipping down on the front of it. Yeah, he's just constantly just yeah, yeah, so mad. Like so every mad. organ at Asa makes him mad because it makes <laughs> him happy. He just gets angrier and angrier the <laughs> yeah. more he comes. Yeah, exactly. It's just like Hitler. Why does it make me feel good? I don't understand. <laughs> no, good is bad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Hitler. Uh, that was going a little Russian there. A little. Is, a little. Yeah, I'm not great at accents. That's okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> well, the, the, pod, the podcast, the Hitler. When we left off, we had just sort of established Hitler's youth and his young adulthood, mm-hmm. uh, the way his best friends talked about him and his sexual life, although after they were no longer his best friends. So again, I'll take everything you hear about Hitler with a little bit of salt. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. One thing we know about the guy for sure is that Berchtesgaden was his happy place. It's a, basically a quiet mountain town where he had, he eventually built a giant fortress up there, but it was, it, he, he had like a room on like to the top of the mountain where he could stare pensively out at the skyline and contemplate being Hitler. Uh, he just needed emo. I think he just needed like Elliot Smith would have saved the world a lot of problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. If you, oh, I feel so seen. Yeah, I feel so seen. <laughs> <laughs> he is also right. <laughs> <laughs> life, life is pain. I understand. <laughs> Becoming Transylvanian. So <laughs> yeah, the, the accents are going to be all over the fucking place. Whoa, I'm Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Now in autumn of 1926, Hitler took a trip to Berchtesgaden in order to relax and plot the Nazi party's next series of electoral coups. Well, he was staying at a fancy hotel. Hitler. Oh, a writer's retreat. Some yeah, kind. yeah, basically yeah. a writer's retreat. Yeah, okay. he was going up to Big Bear to like write <laughs> Great. Get his get his tight five down. But it I wonder was... if he also took a bunch of spinach with him that he didn't end up eating. <laughs> Almost certainly. That's every writer's retreat I've ever gone on. I'm just like, I'm bringing nothing but kale. Yeah, <laughs> and what then kale. none of it gets eaten. I just go to Taco Bell mm-hmm, instead. Mm-hmm. Hitler had that experience too. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, while he was staying in a fancy hotel, Hitler met a lady named Maria Ryder, Mimi, to her friends. Now, young Mimi was in a rough spot in life. Her mom had died of cancer two weeks earlier. Her dad, a member of the Social Democratic Party, had pulled her out of her Catholic boarding school to help run the family clothing Mm -hmm. store. Now, the store was located in the bottom floor of the hotel where Hitler was staying, and Hitler saw her as soon as he arrived. Uh, Seemingly at once, this 37-year-old politician saw a grieving 16-year-old girl and was like, I gotta give me some of that. Ugh, Hitler. No. It's the only moment his dad's ever been proud of him. It's like, <laughs> hell yeah. Oh, there's one more. <laughs> okay, great, of course. <laughs> Probably a couple. Really. Like father, uncle, like son, cousin. Sunkle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, even at the time, 16 was a bit young for a middle aged man to date a. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That became a pattern with Hitler. The older he grew, the age of the girls he flirted with stayed the same. <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this all tracks. Yeah. No. I'm, I, here's the thing. Nothing you've said is is surprising to me. Yeah, it, it's, You're just like, yeah, no, I, I that fills in that part of the that puzzle. That fills in that part of the puzzle. It's just like yeah. picking up little pieces. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> this guy's not such a mystery. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> feel like I've known a few of him. <laughs> it's mostly, it's one of those, like, it's a puzzle of just yeah. like a piece of shit, but with no border. I, so the puzzle just keeps expanding in every direction. N- not only do I feel like I know this guy, yeah. I feel like I've stood in a police station with several friends and tried to warn the police about this guy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Like, it's... Yeah, it's one of those guys that you're like, mm, just get out Hitler. of the car. <laughs> yeah, just... Maybe I should just duck and roll. Yeah, you <laughs> just gotta, you just gotta go. Oh God, hit on sixteen year olds. That was one of the most. Like I was, I was, I, I've definitely told some gross jokes about women in my time, especially when I was like 17, 18 yeah. years old. Like I, I grew up with the same toxic bullshit as everything else. One of the big things in my like change of mind state around this was just the fact that like coming to a realization throughout my twenties that like 
well, every woman I know has been scared for her life at some point during yeah. a date. I'm just worried about, like, am I tipping enough? Like, mm-hmm. is she going to judge me? <laughs> like, yeah, like, the stakes are very, very different really on both different. sides. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hitler's one of those guys today who would have made a lot of women scared. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and then been like, oh, it's your problem. It's your problem. It's like, no, man. I'm not sure what the accents are going. Just here, uh, <laughs> think, have a little bit of empathy a little for bit somebody's empathy. situation that might be different from yours. Yeah. Uh, so Ian Kershaw notes, quote, Hitler preferred women much younger than himself, girls he could dominate, who would be obedient, play things, but not get in his way. I'm going to guess this seems pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Hitler waited until he saw Mimi out of work, sitting on a bench in a nearby park with her sister, playing with their dog, which, okay, is a better move than flirting at her at work. Wait yeah, till yeah. she's out in, you know, a social, uh, public situation or whatever. She's not alone, so you're not mm-hmm. like, you know. You cannot interfere with the work. <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're going to like game, like yeah. question Hitler so far, so, of, of the opening moves you could have done, not, not terrible, other yeah. than the fact that she's a literal teenager. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he, he goes up to this girl. What is uh, this guy, a Republican, uh, uh, uh potentially a senator from uh, Louisiana. Yeah, that's basically what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's not like this happens today. So he's a, a pretty big name in Germany in 1926, and Mimi recognizes him immediately. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of guys look like Hitler. Yeah, yeah. And that is one. Of, he's, 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 he's Hitler. Yeah, it's a recognizable <laughs> he, little pretty much like, oh, face. That's a Hitler right there. Yeah. yeah. Did he so, have the mustache at this point? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. we're about to talk about that. Got so it. Mimi later talked to interviewers, and I'm going to quote uh, the, the book explaining Hitler's kind of the way it put together her Mm -hmm. recollection of how Hitler flirted with her during this period. Quote, she describes the affair in the language of a Harlequin romance novel. Hitler is the stiff, somewhat ruthless stranger who first appears with a dog and a whip, but is later melted into a schoolgirl fantasy lover by her charms. Quote from Mimi. There is the famous Hitler recently released from prison, she's told. He was wearing breeches and a light velour hat, she recalls, and his hand was a riding whip. He had warm, light gray stockings and a windbreaker that was held together by a leather belt. Beside him walked a beautiful shepherd. He sees her, too, and is theatrically captivated. He asks Mimi's sister, Could you introduce me to this bliss? Mimi is brought over. He transferred his riding whip from his right hand to his left, gave me his hand, and looked at me with a piercing gaze, and praised her dog. The dog is really beautiful and well-trained. You are really good at that. They talked about dogs for an hour. Hitler, quote, did not take his eyes off of Mimi. Then he very formally asked her sister Annie whether she would permit him to take Mimi for a walk sometime. At that, she, Mimi, got up and ran away. So... Yeah. This is the this is the first meeting. Uh still she was fascinated in a starstruck way. He mm-hmm. looks quite dashing with his breeches and his riding whip. There is one note that spoils the picture. His mustache. The funny flies, she calls the black hairy growths between beneath Hitler's nose. <laughs> he was still figuring out the mustache at this point. Oh, so yeah. she's she's I mean, she's a literal child, but yeah. isn't entirely against it at first, but runs off when she's flirted with, which again, this is fucking 1926. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's also like at a certain point. Having having been like a, a young gal, that you kind of mm-hmm. have to endure those things. Yeah. You, you you you're polite until you see an exit, and then you're yeah. like, okay, time to go. I'm not gonna out, also. I'm not gonna like outright rebuke you because yeah. you're in a position of power. Yeah, well, it's it's weird because she she recalls this as like a positive thing. Oh, okay, um, I see. But it's also like yeah. She's recalling this years later, and like when she realizes that she mm-hmm. essentially hooked up with the most famous man of the 20th century. Yeah, yeah. So like the, some of this is going to be retroactively. She's going to make it like yeah. a thing. I don't know. You yeah. know. I can't imagine being in that position, so I'm not going to judge Mimi Ryder. No, 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 now, no. She's a child also. She doesn't she, know. She's 16. Yeah. Yeah, and he's the 37-year-old approaching her. So, yeah, yeah. Hitler invited Mimi and her sister to a Nazi party meeting where he was giving a speech. Uh, he wasn't allowed to give public speeches in 1926 as a condition of his parole. So it's an older man with a parole history with like who's on parole at not a 16 year old. What do you, what is he? Uh, what is he? A line chef at a rib place? Yeah, yeah, that is, that's exactly how he that's, makes his money. Yeah. A fucking course he is. He's got a tram zan. Oh trans-zand. God. Bumpers yep falling off oh i know these guys uh, i've bought coke from hitler <laughs> oh man <laughs> yeah you absolutely did yeah that's totally who hitler is oh god oh hitler. I remember i remember working in a in a rib place when i was when i was a teenager in high school like this i know this guy exactly yeah. and there's this one chef that didn't talk to me at all until on on, on valentine's day mm-hmm. he brought me a candy heart that had a picture of a moose on it and it said Oof. you a moose me okay and i remember just being like Thanks. 
That's a move. I and then he had like a child. He had like a baby that nice. he like brought nice. to one of my shifts. Nice. I was like, cool. Glad you're introducing me to your baby. I don't give a shit about this. So how long have y'all been married? <laughs> <laughs> He's probably dead. I hope he is. <laughs> In a healthy society, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the Hitler light guy dies of a coke overdose in his car and <sighs> at age thirty four. Yeah, no, but, exactly. I know. just I just remember, man, no, that's who Hitler was for sure. That's he was who, that's that for fucking sure fry who cook. Hitler was is that <laughs> fry cook. In a healthy society, all our Hitlers are fry cooks. Yeah. And yeah. some of our fry cooks become Anthony Bourdain's. Yes. But none of our Anthony Bourdain's become Hitler's. No. None. No, no, absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, that's that's a healthy society. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, Hitler sensed that this teenager was attracted to his fame, so he like really played that up. After this big event, he put her and her sister at the head table for dinner and sat them right next to him, so they felt like they were at the center of this big important political meeting. But I mean, it was a big important political. The Nazis yeah. went up in charge. So, sure. like, but it's yeah. funny, like thinking about like. From the perspective of the other Nazis in the room, just like, oh, and Hitler has two children with him. The boss him. is hitting on a teenager. Cool. This, <laughs> we're on the right side of it. We're, we're, the, we're the right ones. Yeah, we're the good guys. <laughs> we're doing great. Yeah, we got our fucking, <laughs> fucking cuck pedophile yeah. boss is yeah. running the party. We're, we're on the right side of history. We're, I feel like we're the good guys. <laughs> yeah, we totally are. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, she later recalled uh, and I have to remind you she's talking about Hitler here quote I was very embarrassed and blushed it was as if he had organized the meeting just for me as if all that counted for him now was to just conquer me she was apparently feeling that during dinner Hitler quote fed her pieces of cake like a little child he treated her like a child and then again like a grown woman Uh, after dinner he talked about her dead mom and told her that she had the same eyes as his dead mom (laughs) (laughs) Hitler's game is pretty weird wow holy god there's just so many layers a lot of dead moms coming into how Hitler flirts oh man show me a picture of your dead mom Uh, I hear your mother is dead (laughs) show me mine I'll show you your dead mother I too have a tragically dead mother yeah exactly let's put their pictures together and make them kiss does this do anything for you just 69 are dead moms faces is that what you like little child this is how fuck yes yeah 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 just whipping photos of somebody else Else's dead. dead mother. No, no, throw your mother's photo. Yeah, and watch me cut it in half. <laughs> oh, boy. God. Oh, boy. Yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, he followed that with, uh, or he followed with what Mimi described as a coarse sexual advance, although she unfortunately does not mm-hmm. give the exact details of that. Yeah. Given the 20s, it might have been him complimenting her hands or something. Yeah, yeah. Completely innocent like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not completely innocent. She was 16, he was 37, but you, yeah, get, yeah. you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Later in the dinner, a guest asked Hitler why he wasn't married yet. This was a pretty common mm-hmm. question for Hitler to get. He of answered course. that, of course, he had to save Germany first. According to Mimi, though, at the exact same time, quote, Hitler touched my legs with his knee and heavily stepped on my toes with his shoe. A funny and rude hint at what he wanted to say. This works. This works on I know, Mimi. I know. She says it does at least. You know, who knows yeah. if how accurate her recollections are. I mean, are, I, but... I get it. Because also, like, being a 16-year-old girl at that point, it, it, it's... This is like... This, this is, is like... all intoxicating. This is all very... Um, uh, it's all very complimentary. And, and not that the two men are similar, but he's like a similar level in national politics as someone like Beto O'Rourke, where people yeah, are like yeah. seriously talking, this guy might be in charge soon. So like, yeah, there's yeah. that there's that dimension of this. Yeah, yeah, so like, for sure. You know, well, and it's yeah. also like, you know, you've been forced to drop out of school by your dad. Like your only your mom's way- dead. Yeah, yeah. Your only way to a better life at this point is yeah. probably through a man yeah. to a, another situation. Like you aren't really- Probably, you aren't being primed to take over a business of your and own or anything. Your dad's a member of like the opposite political party, so maybe there's a little bit of that going on too. Where she's, she's like, "My dad's gonna really hate this." Yeah. I'm bringing home the ultimate bad boy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> kind of. There's no better date in a bad boy than literally Hitler. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so based on what you know about Hitler's game so mm-hmm. far, what yeah. would you expect his next step was after uh, talking about his dead mom and then stomping hmm. on a girl's foot? I mean, maybe just like 
putting some of his dad's ashes on like lipstick <laughs> and then asking for a kiss is that <laughs> that would actually be less creepy he chose animal abuse uh, oh great yeah. here's here's Mimi reader quote we went out into the night Hitler was about to put his arm around my shoulders and pull me towards him when the two dogs suddenly attacked each other Hitler suddenly intervened like a maniac he hit his dog with his riding whip and shook him violently by the collar he was very excited I did not expect that he could hit his dog so brutally and ruthlessly the dog which he had said he could not live without yet he beat up his most loyal companion how can you be so brutal and beat your dog like that i asked it was necessary hitler said tenderly he touched my shoulders his mouth changed his voice sounded sad don't you want to kiss me he asked she forces herself to say no that they shouldn't see each other again hitler takes the reaction badly he turned cold kindness disappeared from his face abruptly he turned away said heil and left Yeah, I mean... Pro tip, Hitler, don't beat dogs on a first date. Yeah. That's, I shouldn't have to say that. Yeah, I shouldn't I mean, have to say don't beat dogs. No, no, no. I shouldn't have to say it anyway. Uh, maybe not on the first... You, mm-hmm. you, you know, you, you don't do that. You Most experts don't. say animal abuse is like a third date thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's when you get that dog whip out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, you and your goddamn whip. <laughs> he spooned that dog that night and just whispered sweet nothing mm-hmm. to that poor dog's ear. Oh, I really feel for that dog. I have all of Hitler's dogs. They just saw so many <sighs> sad masturbations. Yeah. They absolutely did. We don't think enough about the suffering dog kind went through during those years. No. It was, it was rough. I know. Yeah. Those poor babes. Yeah. Oh, now, uh, Hitler, once rejected, was not about to give up on his dreams of conquering this girl literally less than half of his age. Uh, he sent one of his men to Mimi's store the next day. This guy told Mimi that he'd never seen the boss so filled with love. Believe me, the man is on fire. Now, this got Mimi to give Hitler a second chance. Yeah. She agreed to a second, and it wasn't quite a date, but she agreed to hang out with him again. He picked her up at work and took her in a ride in his Mercedes. <laughs> he didn't drive, of course. His man Maurice handled the driving. Hitler couldn't drive. Uh, he sat next to Mimi in the back. Quote, he took my hand and put it into his lap. Then he took my other hand as well and pressed it. Now I have your hands, and I have you, and I will keep you now. You're not, you're not a big fan of Hitler's uh, Hitler's Hitler's moves. I don't like his moves. Uh, okay, I All don't right. like what Mimi needed. Like, um, she needed like a Wilson through the fence to yeah. give her some advice. Yeah, about an older man of, going yes. like, "Oh, you shouldn't be dating thirty-seven year old Nazis." <laughs> yeah, yeah. She needed somebody to be on her side <laughs> here. To be like, hey, girl. Some good adult advice. Oh, God. I guess dad was grieving. I'm not going yeah. to hit on him too hard, but it is kind of a failure of parenting if your daughter dates Hitler. Yeah, yeah, When yeah. she's 16, you know? Yeah. Yeah, adult there's... kids can date Hitler. That's their mistake to make. Yeah, exactly. But... There's a couple of lessons that should have been taught. Better parenting at a few levels in this story would have really, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really helped with some problems. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for their next date, Hitler took her to a graveyard to see her mom's grave. Uh, what happened next is just so strange that I, I'm, I'm going to read explaining Hitler's description because it's it's uh, it's weird. Quote, Hitler is overcome thinking of his own mother. Moved by something he did not want to tell me, what he said sounded very grave and utmost distress. I am not ready yet. Hitler, holding on to his riding whip, comforts a sobbing Mimi and strangely chooses that moment to tell her, I want you to call me Wolf. That was his preferred nickname. Uh, Wolf. So he takes her to his mom's grave, or her mom's grave, says he's not ready to fuck, and then asks her to call him Wolf. That was his favorite nickname. He thought it sounded cool. Fucking guy. He made all his friends call him Wolf. Secret headquarters during the invasion of Russia was the Wolf's Lair. I'm just saying he would have been one of those guys with an unironic wolf howling at the moon shirt. You can't tell people your nickname. No, then it's not a nickname. It's not a nickname. Then it's narcissism. Yes. If you get a cool nickname, congratulations. Yeah. But you got to earn it. Yes. You don't get to pick your own. Yeah. Oh, it's bullshit. You know what you do get to pick of your own is the products and services that you spend your money and or commerce units uh, to purchase. Ads! We're back. Yeah, we are. We're back. We just enjoyed the freedom of choice that Hitler would not have approved of. Although, actually, if we're going to be really honest, uh, the Nazi regime was seriously in bed with the capitalist interest in Germany at the time and phrased a lot of what they were doing as a defense of free trade against unionism. But, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, (laughs) no, that's a whole, that's another podcast. We're talking about his boners. (laughs) Yeah, we're talking (laughs) about his dick today. God. Not... The entanglements of fascism and capitalism throughout history. His little wolf. Modern day. Yeah. His little wolf. His little wolf. 
Wolfie. Wolfie, Wolfie. So on their f- fourth date, uh, Hitler decided to make his move on Mimi Reader. He took her out for a walk in the woods and said romantic things to her and then asked her to kiss him, which is, you know, a pretty timeless move. That's a pretty classic date. Pretty- I mean, to be fair, we're going, we're going from... Mom's grave. Mom's grave. Well, no, we're going from... Uh, from like a dinner where he's given a speech. We're going from fascist political meeting, yes. date to, one, where he beats, beats a, dog a dog at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, date mom's two, grave. middle-aged guy takes you on a ride in his Mercedes. Mm-hmm. Uh, date three, mom's grave. Yep. Uh, tells you to call him Wolf. Wow. Uh, and then date four, First walk in the walk. woods. Okay. I mean, the most normal of the dates so far. Is the walk in the woods. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's solid. Fourth date's a decent time to, to make that move if you're, you know, you, she's 16. <laughs> Jesus, Hitler. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So here's Mamie. Quote, I could feel how he clenched his fists. I could see how he was fighting with himself. My child, I could squash you in my arms at this very moment. I did not resist any longer. His true self had come out. Yeah, yeah. This is what Hitler says in his first kiss. Uh, Maybe his first kiss ever. Yeah. Maybe not. Um, Hitler told her that he wanted her to have his blonde Aryan babies, but whined that he didn't have the time right now. What with his mission to save Germany? How many times have you? Just, I just don't. We, I mean, I don't... speaking as a man, we've all used that line. Oh yeah, I gotta classic. save Germany, baby. I just can't help it. I, I just, just... Ger- just the Germany. You know, you're gonna last thirty seconds, you piece of shit. Like, <laughs> please, you've got the time. <laughs> now, uh, Hitler promised to buy an apartment in Berlin for them once you know he was more successful. With you know, he made promises about the kind of the the furniture they'd buy and all this stuff. He told her they'd be together forever, but then he left Berchtesgaden and ignored her for months. This uh, is the worst Springsteen song yeah, I've ever heard. <laughs> he just ghosts her. Yeah, ghosts yeah. Ghosts her for a long time. When he returned to the mountains, finally, he didn't visit her. Being a teenager, Mimi did not take this very well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's okay, buddy. If you're gonna, we're gonna go here. Let's do this. Well, let's do this. I mean, all sorts of pictures appeared in my mind: faces of other women and Hitler smiling at them. I did not want to go on living. Yeah. So she attempted suicide, Aww, trying to hang herself Mimi. on a door handle with a clothesline. Oh yeah. damn, Mimi. Yeah, yeah. Oof. She went for it. Uh, her brother-in-law came in at the last minute and saved her. Yeah. Uh, and according to Mimi, her brother-in-law had came to save her after he had gotten a message from Hitler that Hitler had just sent to him explaining that he hadn't been seeing Mimi recently because he'd been blackmailed by someone who'd sent a letter to the Nazi party office claiming that Hitler was seducing underage girls. So basically months later, Hitler comes in and is like, uh, you know, uh, somebody was talking about us and I had to like go yeah. dark because it would hurt the success of my political party. Yeah. If like we'd kept our thing up. So if, that's if, his excuse. You know, the, the, the truth would have come out. And, yeah. and oh, so it's like, he knows he's not supposed to be doing this. Yes, and this is not a lot of times when you talk about people dating teenagers or whatever in the past. It was definitely more normal back then. Yeah, but yeah. again, this was Still. a political liability for yeah. a 37-year-old. It yeah. wouldn't have been weird if he'd been 25 and dating a 16-year-old. That would have been pretty normal for Austria in 1926. Yeah, but but over like, 20 years is... This is weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what he's doing is weird, and he knows it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so Mimi claims that she found out later that the letters you know, sent into the Nazi party office were actually written by a woman who was close to Hitler and jealous of mm. his relationship with Mimi. It was possibly this lady who was like his bodyguard slash chauffeur who was like in love with him that he may have also fucked. We don't really know that much about that relationship. Whoa. There's a lot of rumored relationships <laughs> that we don't have confirmation of. <laughs> but one shit. thing that is confirmed is yeah. that the Nazis were unbelievably catty bitches. There was tons of oh, drama, yeah. tons of black male within the Nazis. Oh, they yeah. They were gross and they were all fucking with each other. Yeah, and they're all fucking messy. Yeah. Just a bunch of messy bitches for sure. Messy, messy bitches. Yeah. yeah. That's the Nazis. Yeah. So, Mimi and Hitler drifted apart for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole relationship was a huge deal for her, but it seems to have been more of a bump on the road for Hitler. During this time, he repeatedly flirted with his best friend Hanfstangel's wife, as well as Henrietta Hoffman, the daughter of his photographer and fiance of Balder von Chirac, one of his top Nazis. Hitler dated, or at least made moves on, Jenny Howe, one of his drivers and the, the, the bodyguard lady I talked about, mm-hmm. maybe the woman who sent the letter. It's hard to tell how true all the different rumors about women Hitler might have yeah. been with was, but it seems like by the mid 20s, he's famous enough that like a lot mm-hmm. of people are falling for his charms. Yeah, yeah. Largely for his fame. According to Ian Kershaw, quote, 
None of his liaisons, it seems, had been more than superficial. No deep feelings were ever stirred. Women were for Hitler a sport, an adornment in a men's world. Whether in the men's home in Vienna, the regiment during the war, the Munich barracks until his discharge, and his regular gatherings of party cronies in Café Neumauer or Café Heck in the 1920s, Hitler's environment had always been overwhelmingly male. Mm -hmm. Very occasionally a woman would be admitted into our intimate circle, recalled Heinrich Hoffmann, but she never was allowed to become the center of it and had to remain seen but not heard. She could occasionally take a small part in the conversation, but never was she allowed to hold forth or to contradict Hitler. God, I love a silent wife. Uh, silent and dumb, that's the way Hitler oh, likes him. It's nothing better than just a silent it's wife. a quiet woman who's barely alive. Oh, God. Hitler. Now, Hitler's next confirmed fling was with Geli Raubel, his half-niece. Uh, oh, oh, sick. Sick. Here we go. There, you can't stop a Hitler male from fucking his own niece. I just can't. <laughs> they cannot it's stay away in from that. In the blood. <laughs> um, it, 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 it's the thing. Uh, what a... Yeah, two generations of guys fucking their the same age when they start to. Wow. Uh, so he met her when she was 14 years old. Uh, her father had died when she was young, and her mother worked as a housekeeper. They were poor. Um, Hitler did wait until she was 16. Uh, oh, well, what, what a gentleman. What a gentleman. And that's the age when Uncle Alf, as she called him, asked her and her mom to move to Munich and become his housekeepers. Now, for them, it would have seemed like a real upgrade because yeah. he was a very powerful man by this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, he set Gelly and Angela up in an apartment, and while her mom cleaned house, Hitler took his teenage niece out on the town. He found out she wanted to be a singer, and R. Kelly-like started paying for music lessons and promising to make her famous. Yeah. Like... It's all tracks. <laughs> it's all tracks. It's not Tale just Hitler. He wasn't just one of these guys. He was all of them. Yeah, he's the prototype for, I mean, not the pro- there's before yeah. him too, but it's like he really is just greatest hits all around. How many, was he into Jell-O? Was he, <laughs> <laughs> was he drugging ladies? Yeah, is he like super into Jell-O at any point? Yeah, I mean, credit where it's due. That might be an area where Cosby innovated on Hitler. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, well, Although, fair. <laughs> yeah, there's some other crimes coming up here. So, yeah. over the next year or so, Hitler fell increasingly in love with his teenage niece. This did not go over well with his inner circle. Hanf Stengel hated Gelly, calling her an empty-headed slut with the coarse sort of bloom of a servant girl, which is some real sexist rich guy shit. Yeah, P- please blame the child that was brought here by the adult man in power. Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Yeah. Also, if he'd known family Hitler's miles. family history, he would have known servants were sort of the family thing. Yeah, that's kind of how yeah. it works out for them. Oh Weird God. that he and his dad both not only sleep with their nieces, but both bring them in as like servants. serving girls. How how aware do you think Hitler was of that relationship? I don't know. Okay, this is uh, there's a lot of r- rumors that he was to an extent, and he was mm-hmm. trying to keep it hidden from people. Because I'm just wondering if that's like him trying to like normalize how his parents got together in some way. Like Maybe. If, if he even was thinking that consciously about I'm, it. I'm certain it wasn't conscious, but yeah, that yeah. may that may have been a factor. Yeah, yeah. Being like wanting to sort of be like, well, no, you know, if I'm like the biggest man in Germany and this is what mm-hmm. I do, then it wasn't messed up how I grew up. Yeah, it's yeah. It's fine. And I don't have to think about it that much. Yeah, exactly. No, my my mother, aunt, wife, My cousin. mother, aunt, wife, cousin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's great. So, Putsy had to admit still that the infatuation his Fuhrer had with this teenage girl was pretty significant. He said that she, quote, had the effect of making him behave like a man in love. He hovered at her elbow in a very plausible imitation of adolescent infatuation. Mm. So, Gelly wound up having an affair with Hitler's longtime chauffeur, Emil Maurice. Ooh. Hitler forgave her, but fired Maurice. Yep. When a local Nazi party leader named Munder whined that Gelly was distracting Hitler from politics, Hitler fired Munder. Yeah. For a while, Gelly Raubel threatened to derail the coming of the Third Reich entirely. Hitler started canceling plans for speeches and meetings to take her on picnics. Now, Gelly's probably the single most controversial piece of Hitler's backstory. Off the top of my head, the only thing historians debate more vociferously about Hitler is whether or not he was like an active or passive participant in the Holocaust. Mm-hmm. Like th- those are like two of the things that are most yeah. questioned about this guy. Interesting. Okay. Um, the relationship is among other things, the origin of the Hitler liked poop myth. So mm. that's where we're going next. Oh, hell yeah. I, yeah. you know, it's just, sometimes you think you're just going to have a Friday and here it is. And here it, it is. Great. Here it is. It, it does feel great. <laughs> so in 1929, Hitler bought the gigantic apartment that he'd first promised Mimi Reader. But he was over her, so he moved his 17-year-old niece in. Gelly's mother was sent off to Berchtesgaden to keep Hitler's holiday at home clean and to keep her away from Hitler and her daughter. Yeah. So Gelly and Hitler lived in separate bedrooms, but on the same floor. 
Now, our main sources for this particular story about the relationship come from a journalist named Konrad Haydn and our old pal Hanfstangel. They also mm-hmm. come from Gregor Strasser, a former Nazi who fell out with Hitler. So all these stories are from very anti-Hitler people who have reason to exaggerate things, which is yeah. part of why I bring that up. Yeah. So I, I just like that they've got a real, like, I love Lucy set up in their house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very much that, mm-hmm. uh, but with poop. So yep. Vanity Fair quotes all of these sources, and I'm going to read their kind of uh, recollection of events. Great. Uh, starting with Haydn. Quote, Hitler wrote the young girl a letter couched in the most unmistakable terms. It was a letter in which the uncle and lover gave himself completely away. It expressed feelings which could be expected from a man with masochistic coprophile inclinations bordering on what Havelock Ellis calls undenism. The letter probably would have been repulsive to Gelly if she had received it, but she never did. Hitler left the letter lying around and it fell into the hands of his landlady's son, a certain Dr. Rudolph. The letter was bound to debase Hitler and make him ridiculous in the eyes of anyone who might see it. Hitler seems to have feared that it was Rudolph's intention to make it public. So coprophile is obviously yeah. loving poop, and udenism is loving to be urinated on. Oh, so that's oh, that's how uh, this journalist sort of describes this mythical letter yeah. that Hitler almost sends Gelly, but it gets intercepted, and then another Nazi is like threatening to blackmail Hitler with it. I see. Again, I mean, that's yeah. an intense letter. How many rough drafts you go do you go through before, before you... telling your niece you want to poop in her? <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Or be pooped in by her? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. We'd have to ask John McAfee that. <laughs> <laughs> So, Putzi Hofstangel told a pretty uh, similar story in his biography, uh, but he claims that the pornographic content was different. Rather than a letter about his desire to be pooped in by Gelly, mm-hmm. uh, Hofstangel claims that the thing that got intercepted was Hitler's nude sketches of his niece. Uh, oh, he describes the drawings as depraved, intimate sketches of Gelly Raubel with every anatomical detail, which could have meant that it was something mm-hmm. we'd consider really weird or beyond the pale or could have meant that he was just drawing porn of a girl he thought was his girlfriend. I mean, it's gross because yeah, she's yeah. his 17-year-old niece. Yeah, yeah. But it might not have been a poop thing. Yeah, it could uh, just be like a nude photo or, yeah. or nude drawings. Yeah. Now, the most direct story we have or most direct evidence we have of the Hitler-liked poop myth mm-hmm. uh, comes from Otto Strasser. Now, Otto was a leading figure in the Nazi party for a while and mm-hmm. then fell afoul of the party. His brother, who was also a Nazi, was murdered and mm-hmm. Otto became like a critic of the regime. And he wrote about this in a 1940 book that he published after he had fallen out with the party. So again, grain of salt here. Otto Strasser claims that basically after a period of excitement, Gelly got bored of being Hitler's girlfriend since Hitler believed he had to present an image of being available and married to Germany. Hitler's handlers like kind of thought that Hitler's sex appeal was a big part of Nazism's draw and if it was known that he had a girlfriend, like women wouldn't vote for him and then he wouldn't be able to win election, which they may have been right about. There's something, I mean, there's something there, I guess. Yeah. It's hard to say. Yeah. This was like pretty soon after women got the vote too, so like people yeah. were I mean, people were sexist for a lot of reasons then. Gotta yeah. vote for a, 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 an available man. Sexy, sexy Hitler. Maybe yeah. if he sees my ballot, I'll get to be Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Hitler. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mrs. Hitler. So basically, Strasser claimed that, like, Gelly was really bored all the time and yeah. was, like, really frustrated and depressed at not being able to go out with her boyfriend. And f- finally, Hitler, like, allowed him, Strasser, to take Gelly out to a Mardi Gras party because he yeah. was like, okay, I'll let you do something, but I can't go with you because it'll look bad. So you go with my friend. Yeah, yeah. So Strasser claims that during this like party, they were sitting down at a table and mm-hmm. talking, and she opened up to him with a very emotional horror story. Ooh. Quote from Strasser. Hitler made her undress while he would lie down on the floor. Then she would have to squat down over his face where he could examine her at close range, and this made him very excited. When the excitement reached its peak, he demanded that she urinate on him, and that gave him his sexual pleasure. Gelly said the whole performance was extremely disgusting to her, and although it was sexually stimulating, it gave her no gratification. So. Cool. Cool. What a party. What a party. These German parties, man. God damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, Strasser hated Hitler by that point and may have just been trying to slander his name. Other reports of Gelly and Hitler's relationship say that it was about as normal as a sexual liaison between a niece and her uncle could be. We don't yeah. know what they got up to. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we do know is that in 1931, at the cusp of Hitler reaching power, Mimi Reeder came back into his life. Oh. Uh, this is while he's living with Gelly. She's she, like a legal age this time and not even related to him. Yeah, she's like 18 now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So while Hitler's living with and banging his niece, Mm -hmm. uh, Mimi Reader comes, you know, into town. She'd married a guy in the intervening years but dumped him, you know, a little bit in and 
basically yeah. traveled to Munich for a Hitler booty call. Yeah, yeah. So this is her version of events as described by the book Explaining Hitler. She, quote, calls Hitler's adjutant, Julia Schaub, informed that Mimi is in town. Hitler tells Schaub, bring her over. Mimi places the episode that follows in the summer of 1931 when Hitler was living in his big new apartment with Gelly Raubel. Now Mimi claims that during this visit, I let everything happen. So they had sex. Mm-hmm. This is this okay. is like one of the first confirmations we have. And she doesn't give us a lot of detail about yeah. this. But we know that Hitler has a booty call with Mimi in mm-hmm. early, you know, summer or whatever, 1931. Mm-hmm. And then not a whole long while later, maybe just a couple of weeks, maybe a few days, mm-hmm. Gelly Rabel commits suicide. Oh. Yeah. Yikes. Now, there are a number of theories as to why. Ooh. One says she was jealous that Hitler had slept with Mimi and being yeah. 19 uh, at the time took the most dramatic revenge she could imagine. Yeah. Another theory says she started an affair with a Jewish dance teacher in Vienna and was about to leave Hitler. And uh-huh. so he had her murdered. Some of the versions yeah. say that he murdered her himself. Uh-huh. Uh, yet another variant is that she wanted to leave for Vienna because she was just bored, but Hitler yeah. refused to let her go and she killed herself in protest because, again, she was 19. Yeah, yeah. Uh, either way, one detail is consistent across all these stories. Skelly Rabel entered Hitler's room, found his 6.5 millimeter Mauser handgun, and shot herself dead through the chest. Wow. Which, again, is part of why people think it might have been a murder, because she shot herself yeah, through the through chest. Yeah, through the chest, is, that's a hard shot to take. But it's also not uncommon for women who commit suicide with guns to avoid shooting themselves in the head. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So. Huh. Nobody knows. Yeah. This is debated to this day. There are people right now who are trying to have her body exhumed mm-hmm. uh, in order to like ta- and like think that they found out like it's a big controversy and stuff. Interesting. Still. We don't we don't really know what happened. Yeah, it was a massive scandal at the time. People thought it was going to derail Hitler's political career right on the cusp of rising to power. The Nazi Party immediately responded with like basically claiming that she'd killed herself because she was nervous over an upcoming music recital. Yeah, uh, the body was taken away courtesy of the Bavarian Minister of Justice, who was a Nazi sympathizer. Yeah, um, her. Death was declared a suicide after a quick inquest. It was all clearly shushed up by the Nazis of course, and the government yeah. and like the fact that law enforcement was fans with the Nazis. The whole story is it's really hard to like grasp exactly what happened here. There's certainly a good chance she was murdered, but there's at least an equally good chance that she was just driven to suicide by her relationship yeah. with Hitler. Well, and she'd also been like so isolated at this yeah. point like your whole world is this guy and yeah. he doesn't let you leave anywhere and it's like you yeah i can see learning about him screwing mimi when she's living with him could have made her commit suicide i can yeah. see how she might not have known that at all and yeah. have just been fed up by it yeah yeah for sure uh Oof. yeah driving women to suicide along with flirting via whip was sort of hitler's thing Robert Waite, a psychologist, wrote a psychoanalytical biography of Hitler titled The Psychopathic God. Now, Waite is like the first guy who got Langer's OSS report declassified, and he's definitely a member of the Hitler was into weird shit sexually camp. Yeah. So a lot of his conclusions are really debatable, but he makes a decent case to suggest that Hitler was doing something fucked up to the girls he liked. Mm-hmm. Quote, the idea that Hitler had a sexual perversion particularly abhorrent to women is further supported by a statistic. Of the seven women who we can be reasonably, reasonably sure had intimate relations with Hitler, six committed suicide or seriously attempted so damn yeah oh so something something something's fucked up god damn yeah Yeah, he's he's up in some bad business doesn't have to be kinky sex no no no. even more likely maybe that he's just really emotionally abusive being hitler yeah 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 (laughs) yeah something about you know he doesn't seem like a supportive boyfriend. Does not seem like a supportive boyfriend. No, no, no. Uh, no. This is a guy. He's, yeah, he's he's weaving some bullshit in your ears. Suicide is the single biggest through line, rather than poop, of Hitler's sex life. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ava yeah. Brown, who was Hitler's wife eventually, who Hitler uh-huh. met in 1929 while she was 17 years old and he was in his 40s, uh, attempted suicide in 1932. Uh, and again oh. in 1935, and then obviously committed suicide with him in 1945. But yeah. There were two attempts before that point. Wow. While uh, they were still together? Yeah. Wow. Well, well, ish. We'll see. We'll, we'll see, talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Frau Ingele, uh, another possible Hitler lover, successfully committed suicide. So did Renate Muller and Susie Liptower. We don't know a lot about most of these relationships. Geli, Mimi, and Eva are the only women we get a lot of detail about, and Mimi is the only lover who survived fucking Hitler long enough to give a detailed interview. Uh, it turns out that being in love with the leader of the German Reich was even more dangerous than fighting in Stalingrad. So... We're going to talk about why that may have been and about some of the things that we do know about his sex life from some of these women, the, the other details. Uh, but first, is an ad transition. Yeah, let's do some ads. Let's do some ads. Don't think about Hitler's sweaty balls while you think about these products. Damn it, that's a really bad ad pivot. 
Oh, I'm glad Sophie's not here. She's going to be really pissed at that. <laughs> um, uh, products! We're back. All right. Okay. Ooh, what a nice break from thinking about his shitty, sweaty balls. His shitty, sweaty balls. Or ball. Or ball. Who knows? Who knows? Well, his doctor said not, but okay. I don't know. It's a good song. Yeah. Uh, so one of the women who committed suicide and is believed to have been a lover of Hitler was uh, Renate Muller. Uh, she was a, an actress, uh, and she got to tell a little bit of her story before leaping out of a window and falling to her death in 1937. Damn. Yeah. So I'll quote Vanity Fair. Like the, the, these stories came from the guy who was her director, so we don't have her directly being quoted on this. Okay. The guy who worked with her later told the OSS okay. about like what had gone down between them. Quote, her director, one A. Zeisler, later told the OSS that she had confided in him shortly after spending a night with Hitler in the Reich's chancellery, how distressed she was at the nature of the sexual practices Hitler demanded of her, of Mm -hmm. which, to her mortification, she complied. She claimed Hitler fell on the floor and begged her to kick him, condemned himself as unworthy, and just groveled in an agonizing manner. The scene became intolerable to her, and finally she acceded to his wishes. As she continued to kick him, he became more and more excited. Yeah. So that's a really different one. That's like yeah. the Hitler liked being, and that's to me more believable than some of the like a lot of powerful men. They want to be talk dominated. to sex workers. Like that's what these guys go in for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like they want to be, they want to be the sub. I don't have any trouble imagining Hitler wanting a woman to just kick him a bunch no. while he like masturbates on the floor. That's yeah, yeah. That's that kind of sounds like the Hitler yeah. we know. Yeah. No, that 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 definitely sounds that, way more. Because it's like there's a lot of self hate going on, so it's like being able to actually like exercise that part of yeah. yourself. Yeah, that seems for sure. Yeah, I can see how that happened. Yeah. Uh, well, now- and that also just makes a lot of sense with like, um, it would be very difficult to reconcile those two things if you were a woman that like knew mm-hmm. that versus the image of the world that yeah of Hitler that you knew. So that would be. I mean, I I can see how that would help with suicide or it's it's there's also a lot of people who suspect that she did not commit suicide that she was murdered because she knew about hitler's oh. sexual preferences because she was kind of you know dropped out jumped out of a window in 1937 might have been thrown yeah we'll never know this whole state was controlled by the nazis by that yeah. point so you're not getting a good inquest or anything well it's like how many of these women like was it actually suicide versus murder well that's the everyone nobody knows with gelly either yeah, like yeah. it's possible they were all murdered and none of them killed themselves oh a man with hitler i don't have trouble believing like Eva yeah. Brown definitely tried to kill herself beforehand. So yeah. I also I suspect it's a mix. I suspect mm-hmm. one or two of these women were murdered. Yeah. Some of them committed suicide. Mm-hmm. Whatever the case, b- being with Hitler is not great for your long term survival. Not good. Again, Mimi Reader's the only one we get along. Which you know wow. she's kind of uh, Hitler is the romance character mm-hmm. in her recollection of things. But like she lived through it. Yeah, <laughs> that seems to be out. pretty hard. Yeah. Damn. Really. Dodged a bullet there. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, bullet. Eva Brown did not dodge. Now, I think people who focus too much on the possibility of sexual deviance in Hitler kind of might have some kind of bad intentions under the surface. I feel like focusing on that, on like the weird sex aspect of things, yeah. is a way to make him seem less scary. Like calling him a sexual serial killer all- yeah. actually makes him less scary. Because if Hitler's like a serial killer doing mm-hmm. all of these things because he's just Jeffrey Dahmer in charge of a nation, yeah. or if he's some poop fiending sex monster, it- then he's not a normal human being like all of us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and it's also like, that's also demonizing those sexual practices where yeah. it's like, you know, your kinks are your kinks as long as they're consensual. There's something yeah. the matter with them. Whether or not Hitler was pooping in people's mouths, a lot of people who didn't become Hitler were pooping in each other's mouths. Yeah. And it's fine. Yeah. 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 Now, Martin Amos, a best-selling English author, is very much a proponent of the weird sex view of Hitler. He was behind one of these recent waves of Hitler kink stories, one that hit back in 2014, uh, because during a speech he started making claims that he believed – he basically claimed that this was uh, a typical sexual encounter in the life of Adolf Hitler. Quote, he would fortify his underpants with clean serviettes and napkins, and then he would go into some sort of excitation with Ava Brown staying at a safe distance. Mm -hmm. So Amos believes that – and I'm going to quote from an article – about him. There are three schools of thought when it comes to Hitler's sexuality. One is normality, which Amos says that he can be immediately thrown out because it is impossible to see Hitler as a considerate and energetic lover. The next one is asexuality, and the third mm-hmm. is perversion. Yeah. Now, 
This belief is in line with what spurned Nazis like Hanfstangel and Strasser claim, and it is also in line with the Langer report, but very much out of line with the recollections of Mimi Reeder, who probably did fuck him and says that he was pretty normal. Outside, yeah. Like, he was a weird guy, but, like, yeah, in yeah. terms of the way he fucked, nothing that crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hitler's sister Paula does believe Mimi Reeder was, like, the love of Hitler's life, and a lot of other people will say that Gelly was the love of his life. Mm-hmm. It's impossible to know. Maybe he yeah. never cared that much about any of them. I don't know if he's actually capable of love. That's a great question. <laughs> And, and, and one of the reasons that like like Herman Goering is one of the people who's like he was different after Gelly. Like a lot yeah. of a lot of people who wound up in trial after World War Two uh-huh. were the biggest proponents of the Hitler totally changed after his niece killed herself. And there's really? some suspicion among historians that like, well, you're just trying to like make it seem make yourself seem less complicit in that. Like, no, yeah. when I got involved with this guy, he was a normal dude, and then he went crazy, and I, you know, it wasn't I, I did, it, you know, it was yeah. out of my hands. Also, what a way to. Blame it on the woman. <laughs> I mean, the 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 somersaults that people will pull yeah. to blame everything on a woman. It's too. it's amazing. Wow. And it comes down to like Ugh. the ultimate example of that is not to throw shade on Simon Wiesenthal because he's a hero, yeah. but like the Hitler got syphilis from a Jewish prostitute yeah. uh, room. It's like both blame it on a Jewish person yes. and on a woman. There yeah, we yeah. go. Yeah. Oh, cool. That just, what a, what a neat little bow. <laughs> neat little bow we wrapped that up in. He couldn't help it. <laughs> no. He's a victim. <laughs> yeah. So this, like the a- attitude that Hitler was just like sort of irredeemably weird and yeah. like, couldn't possibly have attracted a woman naturally and there was always strange. It's not only out of line with what like Mimi Reader reported, it's out of line with like what his friends who didn't go on trial for war crimes yeah. reported from this stage of his life. We, I, I found an interview in time with a Carl Wilhelm Krauss who worked as Hitler's valet for five years from 34 to 39. Mm-hmm. They were like friendly. Yeah. Uh, and here's what Krauss reported, quote, What I can state here is that Hitler certainly did not hate women. Proof of this are the many actresses who were invited along during the early years to afternoon and evening performances. Often during our travels, he would suddenly be totally enchanted, exclaiming, My God, isn't that a beautiful girl? He then turned around, making me, who was behind him, move to the side so that he had an unrestricted view behind him and could follow the lady with his gaze. If in any given place an exceptionally beautiful woman would catch his eye, Bruckner more often than not had to find out her address. After that, the lady was invited for coffee, either to Munich, Berlin, or the Obersalzburg just so Hitler could have a chat with her. That sounds like normal famous no, guy. No, yeah, that's normal famous that guy. That sounds like fucking any rich famous yeah. guy in LA seeing a girl he thinks is cute and having yeah. someone from his entourage go down to Oh, yeah, absolutely. That yeah, that's <laughs> classic. Sounds like normal famous dude behavior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, John Tolan talked to Emile Maurice, Hitler's longtime chauffeur, and uh, this is the guy who made love to Gelly and then got fired, but for, yeah, yeah. They were, he and Hitler were close for a long time. Mm-hmm. And despite being exiled by Hitler for fucking his niece, Emile Maurice gave a pretty reasonable appraisal of his old boss's sex life. Mm-hmm. Quote, we chased girls together, and I used to follow him like a shadow. The two would spend time at the art academy and in artist studios admiring models posing in the nude. Calling himself Herr Wolf, Hitler would occasionally pass an evening with Maurice roaming the night spots and streets for girls. Since the latter was attractive to women, he would act as a go-between. Every so often, according to Maurice, Hitler would entertain one of these conquests by proxy in his little room. He always offered flowers, even when he was penniless, and we used to go out and admire the ballet dancers. Sounds again normal. No, that's yeah, that's all pretty. Has his hot friend wingman for him, like yeah, yeah, that's all standard. Yeah, again, these are like the, Mm -hmm. and this is a guy you'd expect Emil Maurice would have bad shit to say about Hitler, but like, there's nothing about that I don't believe. That sounds like a million guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing. Ultimately, there's nothing special about Hitler whatsoever. Like, it's like there's. (laughs) That's the conclusion you're drawn to. (laughs) Now. The last destination on our tour to Hitler's love life is, of yeah. course, his relationship with Eva Brown or Braun. Uh, Eva was, as I stated, 17 when they met. She had been educated in a convent, like Mimi Reader, and worked at Heinrich Hoffmann, his photographer's shop. You know, he, she was working there when Hitler met her in 1929. Now, this is during the same year that Gelly and Hitler were supposedly in the midst of the greatest romance of his life. So they were living together in a relationship at this point when oh, wow. he meets and invites Eva Brown out to the opera. He probably started fucking her on the side while he was still with his niece, and then it one point fooling around with Mimi. So there's a point in time when Hitler's like fooling around with three ladies, one of whom lives with him uh, and not telling any of them about this. I mean, that's also standard Standard rich that, guy. Yeah, that's standard rich guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. None of this is weird. Yeah, yeah. You're in the like you you're in yeah. you're in the power that you've craved for so long, so you're gonna like 
you know, fuck a bunch of ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And like the, the Eva Brown's two suicide attempts, one of them coincides with like when Mimi would have come over and yeah. when like Gelly would have killed herself, mm-hmm. uh, and one of them coincides with another potential mm-hmm. person that we think Hitler might have been fucking around with. So it's very yeah. possible that Eva Brown's early suicide attempts in thirty two and thirty five mm-hmm. were because she was a teenager hooking up with an angry man in his forties who played mind games with her and fucked around on the sly. Yeah, no, I mean that all that uh that tracks. J- it tracks yeah. so much better than sexual serial killer. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Eva Brown makes is someone who I I'd never really had make sense to me as mm-hmm. a historical character before, but she makes so much sense if you think of her as a sensitive artistic young woman dating a really really abusive dude that she's in love with. Yeah. Uh Eric Kempa, another Hitler chauffeur, called her the unhappiest woman in Germany. <laughs> I really like Eva Brown as portrayed by the author Jane Tyne. Now, Jane is a romance writer, uh, mostly romantic historical fiction from what I can tell, but she's also written some serious historic essays. And the one of hers that I read was pretty good. Uh, I like the way she presents Eva because as a general rule, brilliant as they are, most of the great Hitler biographers are male and kind of suck at getting into Eva Brown's head even a little bit. So I'm going to read a quote from Jane, kind of describing Eva Brown a little differently than I'd heard her described before. Quote, from Eva's letters, we learned that her parents disapproved and that Hitler would frequently ignore her in public, merely passing her an envelope of money until the end of the at the end of the evening. When she was finally allotted a room in the Berlin Chancellery, she was forced to use a back entrance in case anyone saw her. Hitler and his henchmen tried their hardest to keep Eva out of the spotlight and forbade any picture of her to be published because they were keen to project the idea that he was married to Germany. Yet Eva herself ensured the opposite for posterity. She was an early adopter of cinefilm and made endless home movies. Today, she would have been constantly on Facebook, Instagramming her meals and taking selfies at the Berghof. One of her more astonishing ambitions was to star one day in a biopic of her life with the man she always called Wolf. Hmm. So yeah, she's... Yeah. Sounds like a pretty normal teenager yeah. dating a famous guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I also like what Jane has to say about the Hitler is weird at sex myths, because I think what she says rings true with an awful lot of the other research I've read. Quote, it is impossible to peer behind the bedroom door, but suggestions that Hitler was sexually avoid because of his obsession with hygiene is contradicted by observers of the time who suggest that Hitler and Eva did share a bed as a couple. They had interconnecting bedrooms at the Berghof and Hitler's valet. Heinz Ling attests that they would go to bed together. While Hitler's maid, Pauline Kohler, wrote that Hitler is not strongly sexed, Eva Brown's correspondence reveals nothing unusual, certainly not on the lines of fully clothed sex, except that once war had broken out, Hitler was unable to get interested. She used to show her friends a 1938 photograph of Neville Chamberlain on a sofa in Hitler's Munich flat, saying, if only he knew what goings on that sofa has seen. <laughs> like, we fucked on the sofa and then the Prime yeah. Minister of England sat on it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a That's normal a teen. teenager. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you're still on the fence, if you're still on team Hitler was a kind of demonic sexual force rather than just a gross shitty dude who wound up in power through cunning and luck and the cowardice of arrogant men, well, I'd like to read one more Hitler story. Okay. Mimi Reader came back to Hitler after their 1931 liaison. Uh, this was in 1934, when Hitler was in power. Gelly had been dead for three years, her room had been turned into a shrine, and Hitler was unofficially with Eva Brown. Now, Eva doesn't live with him at this point, because of course he's got to appear married to Germany. That, this, old, that, that, that old ball and chain. That old ball and chain, <laughs> Germany. <laughs> this gave Der Fuhrer the ability to invite Mimi in when she knocked on his door. I'm going to quote from explaining Hitler's write-up of Mimi's recollections. Quote, Once again, the relationship came to life. Once again, he asked her to stay with him as his lover. She insists she will not be part of an illicit relationship. She wanted to be married and to have children. Suddenly, Hitler had a fit of rage. He shouted, Why do you women only think of having children? He kept shouting. It was around 3 a.m. that he could not take care of a woman. He shouted that he had a big mission to fulfill. They argued for two more hours. Then they departed, never to see each other again. Whew! Yeah. (laughs) Dodged several bullets, Mimi. You really did. And... It, yeah. It's also so crazy because it's like, okay, the, you're going after women that are raised in convents, motherfucker. Like, the only purpose mm-hmm. <laughs> for sex in the Catholic Church is procreation. Yep. And then you're mad at them. Like, you're taught all the same shit. Oh, God. Yeah. I I think what, like, maybe Hitler was into poop and pee. And maybe mm-hmm. he liked sex with clothes on. Yeah. Maybe not. At the end of the day, the overwhelming picture I'm left with of Hitler yeah. is that he was the same, like every woman has dated a shitty guy who's oh, yeah. just like Hitler. They just didn't wind up in charge of the country. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's like a selfish 
fucking idiot dude that needs to go to therapy. He, he's selfish. He's famous, and he's going to take as much advantage of that as he can. Yeah. He's a habitual liar because mm-hmm. he's fucking Hitler. Yeah. Uh, and he's emotionally abusive, and mm-hmm. he screams when he doesn't get his way. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's, a, he's fucking... a gaslighting piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. a, yeah, Hitler turns out piece of shit. Hitler turns out piece of shit, but not yeah. like, of course he's a bad person, but he's not, like what's scarier to me about this is that like there's nothing special about him. Yeah, he's just classic piece of shit. He's it's just not... a normal piece of shit. Yeah, it's yeah. nothing out of the ordinary. And that means, like the good thing that means is that like we we as human beings will never deal with supernatural evil settling down upon no. the world and forcing a nightmare regime on us. Yeah. But it also means that there's millions of guys like this walking around who if they ever got into power, yeah. This have is... that kind of potential. Oh, exactly. So this yeah. is the this is the blueprint for those kind of guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's why when you look at the fucking evolution of incel culture on the mm-hmm. internet, they're really into Nazis. Yeah. They and they're really into ISIS too. They love them both. No, yeah. They love the murder and the the hatred and like the ability to do violence on like a world you feel is wrong to you and Yeah. They all have issues with women and mm-hmm. none of them fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, and none of them like ask why a woman might not be into them immediately. They all have that reaction when like a buddy's like, maybe just learn to dance or whatever. Like, I will not learn <laughs> to I dance. I will not learn to dance. I will not learn to dance. That's the fucking Hitler I want people to like think about when they imagine what kind of man could do the things he did. It's yeah. the kind of guy whose friend is like, well, maybe learn to dance and that girl who likes dancing will be interested in you and he just starts screaming. Yeah, like exactly. there's as if. I could improve. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. I'm already a perfect being. I am a perfect being. Me, 14-year-old horny Hitler is... Like, <sighs> oh, God. Yeah, no, that's... Fucking Hitler. Yeah, I mean... Fucking Hitler. He's the worst. Mm-hmm. I mean, but he's not, is the thing. Exactly. Yeah, he's not. He's, like... He's perfectly average. Yeah, he's, he's a perfectly average, shitty person mm-hmm. who wound up in a position of power and did the kind of things that, like... Comparing him to a serial killer is wrong. Comparing him to one of these incel kids who goes on a mass shooting rampage or drives a van into a sorority house or whatever to kill, that's who to compare him to. Yeah, that's much more accurate. Yeah. For sure. And he, I think that that is one way to look at sort of the Holocaust is that Mm -hmm. like it was a reaction of like anger at not winning this war and like wanting to do as much damage as you could. And there's like an attitude of that about like the destruction of Berlin, that Mm -hmm. like the reason he didn't pull out of Berlin or the reason he didn't surrender and just shoot himself that way and spare the city and people is Mm -hmm. he was like, no, if we're going to lose, all of us are going to die. Yeah. Fuck Germany. Taking everybody with me. You didn't fight hard enough for me. Exactly. Like that was literally like some of the shit he would say is that like if Germany doesn't win, we deserve to be destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Like he's just a shitty, angry little prick with a temper who yeah you know if if i mean fuck it man like to get really dark on you Mm -hmm. maybe in a society where young men like that go on mass shooting sprees they're less likely to become hitler like i don't know if that's like good or whatever but like hitler (laughs) doesn't have that option and just becomes hitler yeah like we're in dark territory here but i do think he's that kind of guy yeah well and it's also like it's being raised to think that you were special and then having the having that lie yeah because nobody's special there's no a people nobody's on the special there's a lot of people out yeah. there hitler well and like that's that's the big thing about so many of these incel guys is like they're raised to think that they are yeah. like the princes of their own little kingdoms a lot of and mama's boys a lot of mama's boys Rush v that pickup artist yeah. guy living in his mom's basement oh yeah talking no. about how the jews are behind everything mm-hmm. like <laughs> exactly. it just keeps happening well and then they're <laughs> mad at they desperately need a woman but they're mad at a woman mm-hmm. because they think a woman sees them as weak because they need them to feel special. Yeah, the idea that like a relationship would have give and take and that you both have things to teach each other. Yeah. Like he doesn't want to be taught anything. No, 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 yeah. no, no. He just wants pure allegiance. Yeah, which is why he goes after 16-year-olds. Yeah. Probably why his dad went after 16-year-olds. Yeah, absolutely. Repeatedly. Yeah, it's a power trip. It's a power trip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't want an equal of any kind. You no. Fucking coward. That's terrifying. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. No, just a real piece of shit. So um, if you've ever wondered what happens if you give one of those incels on Reddit uh, the most powerful military force in continental Europe, it was World War II. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah, no, exactly. They'll just keep uh, pushing. Boy, howdy. Hitler. Yeah. yeah, so teach your sons to dance. Teach your sons to dance and 
that's the only thing we've learned today. Yeah. Is teach your sons to dance. You can dance if you want to. Yeah. Make make sure if you vote for someone, they don't date teenagers. At the very least. At the very least. At the very least, make yeah. sure they're not dating teenagers. Because that's how you get Hitlers. Yeah. That's how you get Hitlers. Don't let them fuck their niece. Yeah. Yeah. Can you make eye contact with a woman of your age yeah. without being filled with rage? Yeah. Yeah. Are you... <laughs> Are you capable of like having a conversation with a woman yeah. uh, without screaming? Like, yeah, you know, exactly. So it's, it's also, are you capable of like seeing your dog misbehave without beating it and choking it and scaring a teenager? Yep. Hitler. Oh, God, I'm just um, kind of mad those uh, his German Shepherd didn't finish the job early. Yeah, no, I mean it was a goat that supposedly bit off his dick. Yeah, I wish that goat had just. I wish that goat ate, ate the whole Hitler. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chew that tin can up. Spit oh, them out. Oh, how different the world would be if we <laughs> just had like a weird, did you know that back in like the 1909, a goat ate a boy? <laughs> <laughs> what, what if like in the future, the only animals that can time travel are goats? So we did try to kill Hitler, yeah. but he only bit his dick the, off. The goat only just, just got part of his dick. And it was, yeah. Uh, and we actually just really made it worse than it was in the first place. Yeah, it would have been fine otherwise. He would have just went on to become a... Mm-hmm. I don't know, like a like a sub in a dungeon. Yeah, I feel like that's the thing Hitler might have been happy with. Yeah, He'd absolutely. Really gotten in touch with his demons. Yeah, for sure. But... He he just wanted to be whipped. That's why he carried a whip with him everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Somebody it, whip me. Please. Admitting that takes some courage, though. It does. It does. It, I mean, I mean it still does in 2019. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. it, it's the more open people can be about the kinks and stuff like that, the mm-hmm. and the more open sexually yeah. the world can be and more accepting. Then I think uh, the less. That's why I, I say this every day. Mm-hmm. I say it a lot uh, to my roommates, to police officers during traffic stops. More dominatrixes yes. is the only thing that will protect us from more Hitlers. Truly. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's, I think, the note we're going to end on. Brandy, you want to plug your pluggables? <laughs> yeah. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Brandazzle. My website is brandyposy.com. Brandy with an I-E, Posy with an E-Y. Um, I have an album available wherever you listen to albums. It's called Opinion Cave. It's very funny. Feel free to buy it. Um, and then I have a podcast called Lady to Lady. Um, it's me, Barbara Gray, and Tess Barker. And then we have a fourth guest on every week. Past guests have included people like uh, Karen Kogara, or French Stewart uh, or uh, Margaret Cho. Uh, it's a really, really fun podcast. Um, and then I have a monthly show here in Los Angeles on the second Saturday of every month called Picture This. And that's um, a show that I've hosted for six years where we pair up comedians with animators. They live animate your jokes behind you during your set. It's like you riffing within your own bits. And we get like really insane uh, artists to come do the show all the time. Like we've had Pendleton Ward from Adventure Time. Craig Bartlett, the creator of uh, Hey Arnold, has been on recently. And then we have people from amazing shows like Bojack Horseman and uh, Big Mouth and Mr. Pickles. And it's uh, it's a real, real great fun time. Um, that's the second oh, Saturday. God. And that's some music. And that's uh, my alarm that's <laughs> set at 4.30 for no good reason. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but yeah, those are my plugs. Come see me and all the shit, guys. Well, if you if you currently know a young man who you're worried is going down a Hitlery path, yeah. tune him into those shows. Maybe, uh, maybe open up his mind a little bit. Listen to some yeah. progressive comedy. Get him some dance lessons. Get Tell him to, him to listen to my podcast. Have a couple of men. Let him hear a couple of men laugh at themselves and... You know, realize that it's okay. Yeah. 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 Like get him out there and just give him a hug. Or hire a goat to bite his dick off. Uh, yeah. Either way, you know, it's up to you to fight the Hitlers in your life. We all encounter a couple of Hitlers out there. Hey, you time traveling goats listening out there, mm-hmm. finish the job next time. Finish the job and retroactively render this episode pointless. <laughs> uh, I am Robert Evans. You can find us online at behindthebastards.com. You can find me on Twitter at, at IWriteOK. I have a book called A Brief History of Vice, where I do drugs, which if Hitler had done more of when he was young and not when he was old, he might have also come to some better conclusions about his ego. Uh, I'm the podcast, the, the Ad Bastards Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Buy a t-shirt, Behind the Bastards, T Public. Uh, fuck Hitler, I love 40% of you. <laughs> <laughs>